Welcome to this edition of Driving Forward. And this time we're going to be speaking to John Edmiston, who has quite a long title. He's the Global Chief Financial Officer of CarTrack and the Deputy CEO uh, of the company uh, globally. John, we've talked a little bit before about uh, the technology, the tracking technology. It's a fascinating uh, mm. uh, technology that helps uh, fleets be managed properly. It uh, has issues of security. Let's talk for a moment though, about the business behind the technology on which right. that, uh, the business has been founded on the technology. So right. how is the business doing? Mm. Give us an mm. idea of the scale and the scope of it at the moment in South Africa first. Sure. Well, in South Africa, we've been, we've been operating about, 10, uh, about 12 years now. And uh, our total staff complement exceeds a thousand people active working solely for Quartrack in a, in a, on a given day. So it's a, quite a substantial operation throughout the country. Uh, internationally, the, you can add on approximately another 500 employees and uh, growing every year. Um, we've just hit our 1 billion rand turnover mark, over 500,000 subscribers. Um, and, uh, you know, now being, being listed, um, our results are all available there. We've had an exceptionally good year in the, the past year with uh, uh, um, earnings per share improvement of 25%. Um, so we're very satisfied with that. Um, in terms of, of, of the business, yes, uh, uh, South Africa is by far the largest market since we started here. It's a very highly penetrated market with quite intense competition and you know this competition I think has really been good for the market it's it's um, given us the opportunity to to brand ourselves the the technology and the service is now well understood by by both the man in the street in the majority anyway as well as the fleet managers and uh, the opportunity for penetrating those markets even further uh, is is at hand there's a lot of a lot of technology development. Um, we know, understand connectivity to individuals, connectivity to vehicles now is becoming more and more important. And, uh, you know, given the economic woes of the country as well, you know, and the world at large for that matter, uh, it's becoming more and more important really to consider using the services of a fleet management and tracking company. Um, a lot of give, it provides a lot of opportunity to improve the efficiencies of business to improve the safety on the roads, safety of individuals, combating the crime, uh, of, uh, which is, in terms of our base at least, is, is on the rise. This mm -hmm. last year we've seen a fairly significant increase in the rate of thefts on our, on our subscriber base. And uh, as well as quite unfortunately, an increase in the violence of the attacks. Um, and hijacking starting to show itself again in a, to a greater extent. Is there any so, reason that you can discern for this? Because obviously you, you, you make it your business to try mm. and work out why this is happening. Yeah, I think, you, you know, pe people, you can say there are economic impacts. Um, there are reports, international reports on studies done on that and connecting unemployment and uh, poor economic growth in a country to crime in general, as well as vehicle crime. So I suppose there is an element of that, but at the same time, it's very clear to us that theft of motor vehicles is a business. And uh, it's an organized business. Um, there's money to be made out of it by the criminals. And uh, it will, I think, uh, thrive in a way um, regardless of whether you know the economy is booming or it's mm. or it's sluggish, I suppose. But what you've got to do is say that uh, the chances of crime or the effects of that crime are reduced with the technology mm. that you offer. Yes, that's for sure. I think the the entire vehicle tracking industry um, has really has made a difference because at some point in time you have to throw technology at, at things to solve problems, and I think we've been able to bring that. Um, technology, the tools to the party, which will also aid and assist the police, of course, in their role. Mm. All right, well, let's just again look at the business. I'm trying to get an idea now of, uh, I walked into your offices today here in Rosebank in yes. Johannesburg, and we see people in front of screens. Mm. So w what are they doing? What are the employees doing? Mm. Once mm. you've sold a contract, mm. you've got someone on your books, uh, are they looking after right. these people? Right. How does it work? Yes. It's a very interesting business. It might not have 
appear so from the outside necessarily, but it's very multifaceted. Um, it's an IT business in one sense. It's a technology, electronic technology business in another. It's a uh, consumer-facing business. It's a marketing marketing operation, and it's a really a, at the end of the day, it's a, a, it's got its cr um, crime-fighting aspects, and it's got its services that we render. By do, of course, you've got to market yourself. You've got to sell. So you've got a, we've got a large national sales force. Um, you've got to support those clients. So there's a big call center support base, um, and uh, you've got the normal business requirements of finance, finances and human resources and the like. So there, there's, it really is uh, spans a, 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 every sector of of a business that mm. I can imagine, mm. and as such is a very interesting business to, to run and to operate in. You um, say the South African market is quite saturated and uh, intense. What about other Southern African and African countries? And uh, one would think there's great opportunity there. Mm. There's, uh, well, even within South Africa, being well penetrated, we would estimate that maybe 25% or so of the total vehicle population in South Africa has a tracking device in it. Um, we expect that you could we, the, the um, penetration should get to 50 odd percent over the next few years. So there's still a lot of growth there. But in our neighbouring countries and uh, even and also where we in um, in Asia, for example, in Europe, it's still a very much a growing growing business. Um, in Africa, I think there's a lot of growth still to happen. Um, it's a difficult continent to work within. Um, it doesn't have all the first world systems and um, uh, banking systems that aid and assist us here in South Africa. Uh, so it's quite a challenge, but we, at least we do understand those markets. Um, and I've given time and given the fact that, uh, you know, Africa is still the fastest growing um, economy, albeit for low base, but it is growing and the population is growing fast. So. The future, one would expect, would would um, hold a lot of potential. Yeah. The infrastructure still needs a lot of a lot of attention. Talk a bit more about uh, Asia and Europe. I mean, one gets an impression that South Africa, possibly because of the crime, mm. uh, has been one of the world leaders in this field. Mm. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily be so that we were leaders, but we we have yes. been. Yes. So, in terms of growing the business uh, in Europe and mm. Asia. We, we found it very interesting, yes. The technology that we built in South Africa is world leading, no doubt. However, what we do see there is that the, from a fleet management perspective, a business commercial use for the services, the advances in Europe, we see it in, in the USA, we're not there yet, but we are, we are investigating um, opening up in, in the US shortly, um, and in Asia. The, it's used to a much greater extent, and it's, it's actually advancing faster there in terms of the use mm. of the services and the manner in which to use the services to gain, to gain the efficiencies out of it. So we're actually learning a lot from, from those countries as well, which we can put into one pot and bring back to South Africa as well to, to actually take maybe, um, you know, to, do, to tr uh, attention to dominate the market in terms of additional services. Have you found particular countries where there's a niche where you think there's a great opportunity? Um, you know, every country really does represent an opportunity. If there are vehicles there, there's an opportunity there. Um, it's, it's not vastly different uh, in terms of what is required albeit, as I say, certain countries are more advanced or use the user services to a great extent. But the fundamentals are the same, albeit uh, certain countries have much stronger regulations than we do in South mm. Africa. And in actual fact, I think that's one of our, the issues we should be dealing with in this country, that, you know, with the government and the, ro the, the road and maintenance um, organisations, and the safety organisations is to actually introduce more regulation, which can can only benefit in terms of safety, maintenance of roads, etc. Mm. What's the easiest country to do business in that you've come across? Well, that's quite a question. Um, I think it, it actually it probably 
is South Africa, but mm. that I would say simply because this is the area we are most familiar with. Mm. You're born here, you grow up, you know the culture, you know the people, you know your way around. Um, the challenge in, in any international country is to actually learn, relearn all of that mm. and give yourself time to adapt, mm. not think you can change that country, yeah. but rather you adapt to it. And that takes a bit of time. What about partnerships uh, and MAN? I saw some news about yes. the MAN company, mm -hmm. M-A-N-N, truck company, collaboration with them. Uh, what's been behind that? Mm. Yeah, it's quite an interesting one because people do ask you about the, the potential threat to the businesses like ourselves from the original equipment manufacturers, the car manufacturers, the truck manufacturers. And uh, he has a, is a very good case in point where MAN, as we know, is a very you know, accredited international truck and bus supplier. And for, for many years we've been installing all their vehicles in South Africa and that are exported into Africa at the, at the assembly plant with a, a car track tracking device. And that's been very successful for them from a theft perspective. But with this increase in use of telematics, they decided that the telematic services that we can provide them with actually are more suitable for the country the, uh, for, and the terrain that we operate within here than the bespoke product that, uh, that is installed in every man, man vehicle from mm. Germany. Mm. Um, so it's a case where we've now been able to collaborate with them and for, for them to actually sell our product which is specifically customized for them to their requirements uh, to, to brand it as man telematics and um, to, to sell their vehicles with that, that is supported by that service. And of course we've got the infrastructure locally to support that, which not every motor manufacturer would want to create really. You know, the installations, the repairs, the servicing, the managing of the networks. There's a, there's a, the type of billing that it is, is not a type of billing system that every, every company initially has. So it's quite specialised in many respects. And I think that's where the tracking companies can come to the party and provide a more holistic um, uh, service and product to, to that target market. It sounds like every uh, company like MAN, uh, it would be in their interest to do this. It would make sense, wouldn't yes. it? Yes, no, ab absolutely. They do have their own, many of them. But I think in certain cases it makes sense to contract that out to, to really somebody who focuses specifically on that aspect of the business rather than the, the bigger picture of selling, you know, a large asset like a truck. Well, we'll have to end it there. I've been speaking to John Edmiston, who is Global Chief, Exec Chief Financial Officer and Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Global uh, Car Track Operations, about the business behind that technology which they use. Thanks for joining us.